Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Charles. In the last grammar segment video, we discussed about pronouns. In this video, we are going to talk about an interesting topic, reported speech. And at times, we call them as direct and indirect speech. This is one of the interesting topics in English grammar. Many of us find it little tricky while converting direct into indirect speech. Both are equally used in the communication, but there is a slight difference in direct speech and in the indirect speech. Generally, direct speech is used in the written form. Whenever we write something, we use direct speech, but the indirect speech, we can use it for spoken. We, it is very difficult to use the sentence in the direct speech when we speak, but it is very easy and it is cool thing to write it and convey the message. After finishing this video, you must be able to easily convert direct into indirect without any doubt and that is going to be sure. And before getting into today's content, I would like to thank each and everyone for your great support and I am very happy to see a lot of subscribers. Thank you very much. You are my support. You are my inspiration. Thank you once again. Fine. Let us get into the topic. Today's topic is direct and indirect speech. Can also be said reported speech. So let us check what are the important points that we need to keep it, keep it in our minds when we convert a direct into indirect. Two, two things we must always keep in mind. One is the time of the report and who is being reported. The time of the report and who is being reported. Let us get into the topic just with an example. Fine. There is an example. Here is the sentence. Ravi said, I love English. It is a direct speech because it is quoted. We have put the sentence in a single quotation mark. So we have quoted, this is a direct speech. And I am going to convert this into indirect speech. And the sentence has been converted into indirect speech. Ravi said that he loved English. So there are many changes in the sentence, but both the sentence mean the same thing. There is no changes in the meaning, but there are few alterations in the construction, in the syntax of the sentence. That you should always keep it in mind. When you convert the direct into indirect, we would make a lot of changes in the syntax of the sentence, but the meaning always remains the same. That is actually the right way. You cannot change the meaning. I am going to give you a few rules and you have to follow them. Once you follow and learn them and put them into usage, you will be able to convert a direct into indirect and indirect into direct in an easy way. Fine. The first rule is First rule, you need to identify the reporting sentence and the reported sentence. To put it very precise, the reporting verb and the reported verb. Here, said is the reporting verb, love is the reported verb. Said, reporting verb. This is actually reporting and the, and the verb love is a reported verb verb. Okay. I'll give you one more example.
here is a sentence alex said i go to school simple sentence i'm not going to complicate you with uh, too many clauses too many phrases in a sentence it's a simple sentence it is easy to make you understand alex said i go to school here the simple clue is whatever that is outside the quotes is reporting and whatever that is inside the quote is reported so here alex said the said is reporting and go is reported so keep that in mind whatever that is in the inverted quotes that is that is called a reported verb whatever is outside the quotes it is reporting verb okay fine we'll get into the next rule the first rule is identifying the reporting verb and reported verb okay and the next step is changes there are certain changes that you need to make in the reported verb or reported sentence i told you only changes if you know that's all the concept is over now i'm going to give you what are the changes that you need to make in the sentence just listen carefully first change is change in the tense okay so you know tenses right there are three tenses in english present past future or rather past present future or uh, there are also other aspects of each tenses okay all together there are 12 some teach 11 so i teach 12 also okay those changes you need to make here i am going to give you a list of changes that you need to make please go through and have a note first changes in the tenses second change that you need to make is in the helping verbs you know there are there are helping verbs modal auxiliary as well as primary auxiliary so those changes i'm giving here please make a note and so that you will be able to use them in the sentences here is the list of verbs and their changed forms here are some of the changes in the adjectives and the adverbs okay you need to you know go through them and make a note of them okay let us get back to the business here i'm going to write two kinds of sentence please observe and i'm going to convert them here are two sentences the first sentence James said I play cricket Second sentence Ravi said to Sam I want a cup of tea Here are two sentences and I'm going to convert them please watch carefully James said that he played cricket so it is full stop In the second sentence ravi told sam that he wanted a cup of tea full stop so you have seen the conversion of two sentences jane said i play cricket that has been converted jane said that he played cricket and the second sentence ravi said to sam i want a cup of tea that has been converted into ravi told sam that he wanted a cup of tea so you must be having a doubt 
why do I use the word told? It is that simple. All you need to make is, you need to just be careful what the sentence is. I told you in the initial part, the time of the report and who is being reported. The difference is, this sentence is said, just said, it is not said to anyone. Okay, there is no particularly told or there is no particular person whom it is told to. It is not so. Here, Rav is said to Sam very clearly. So, whenever, when the sentence is said to someone, when sentence is report to someone, we have to use told. And other times, we just use that. Uh, sorry, said. So, when you use told, you should not use to. Told goes individually. Told to is not the right usage. Said to is the right usage, but told to is not the right usage. When something is said in general, we use said. When something is said to someone, we use told. Is that clear? This is one condition you always should keep in mind. And there is another condition. Let us look. Fine. I told there is again a condition. Let us look at the example. Charles says I teach English. There's one sentence. Again. There are two sentences here. Charles says, I teach English. Charles will say, I am very dull. Oh, sorry. Why should I be dull? Let me be happy. Okay. I am happy. Fine. So, here are two sentences. What are the changes that we need to make? I am going to convert this sentence into in direct speech. Please observe. Charles says that he teaches English Charles will say that he is very happy. So you must be wondering why did I leave the verbs as they are? So it is in the, in the very first box I have given the present becomes past, present continuous becomes past continuous, present perfect becomes past perfect. Why have I not changed these sentences? So that is what I told you. There is a condition. So what is the condition? If the reporting verb is in the simple present tense or future tense, the reported verbs will remain unchanged. As per the condition, if the reporting verb is in simple present tense or future tense, the reported verbs remain unchanged. Please make a note. The pronouns changes, definitely. And the rest of the things we need to change. Okay, the adjectives, adverbs will change, but the verbs will remain unchanged. Do you get it? Keep that in mind. Okay, let us go to the next condition. This would be the last condition and let us get into some other inter interesting stuff. He said... Milk is white. Please bear with my bad handwriting. I cannot help it. Fine. Here is the sentence. I said it's a condition again. I'm going to convert this. 
he said that milk is white. Again, you may be in the confusion because I have given a, a table where all the primary auxiliaries in the, when they are in present, they will be changed into past. But why it is not changed here? Okay, whenever the sentence is related to universal truth, you must have heard a lot. Milk is white, honey is sweet, the earth revolves around, around the sun, all these things are universal truth, there cannot be any changes. The works will not change, they remain same. So please do make all these notes so that you will be able to convert the sentences in your day to day. Fine. So far we have discussed the changes. What are the changes? What are the conditions? We need to keep them in mind whenever we convert the sentence from direct to indirect speech. Now, let us go sentence wise. So, as I told you in the previous class, I have discussed with you four types of sentences. So, we just have to now go through four types of sentences and what are the changes that we need to make. Fine? So, as all these things I have said, all these things will fall under assertive sentence. Let us go now. For interrogative sentence, what is the change that we need to make when we deal with interrog interrogative sentence? So you have learned interrogative sentence, right? You have learned interrogative sentence. Interrogative sentence is nothing but a question. Okay. We have two types of questions here. One is WH questions and one is yes or no question. Whenever there is a WH, WH question, when, say, when I say WH question, the questions begin with W and H. Okay, not that WH together, not why, what, even how falls into this. Okay, this question requires detailed answers. Fine, but there are yes or no questions. There are some certain questions you don't have to, you know, answer them in brief. You, you know, in a detailed way, you just have to say yes or no. That gives perfect answer. So there are yes or no questions, okay? There are WH question, there are yes or no questions. First let us deal with yes or no questions. So here is the sentence, Jack said, are you coming for a ride? So what are the changes that we need to make? Whenever we convert an interrogative sentence, the said changes into asked, inquired, demanded, wanted to know. These are some of the words we can use. Fine? Whenever we discuss with, whenever we discuss a interrogative sentences. If you have an yes or no question, we have two words specially. One is if and one is whether. Jack asked if I was coming for a ride. The major change that you see here, the question becomes a statement. So when you convert an interrogative sentence, the interrogative sentence becomes an assertive sentence. Though there is a question mark, but here we need to have a full stop. Understand? Yeah, that is of yes or no question. Let us get back to WH question. Seema said, Seema said, what are you doing? Question mark, full stop outside. So this is a WH question. Okay. So what we need to use is asked, demanded or inquired. 
these are the words we use we don't use if or whether okay so i'm going to convert so what we need to do is here while converting we have verb and subject the structure of the questions sub a uh, verb and subject so when you convert the sentence when you convert an interrogative sentence it is always the other way you bring the subject and send the verb the other side okay whenever there is a wh question you need to use the same word when you convert the direct into indirect for example seema asked me what i was doing full stop so so seema asked me what i was doing in the interrogative sentence we do not use that okay. seema asked me what i was doing here verb and subject gone away here subject and verb this is the changes you need to make when you convert an interrogative sentence from a direct to indirect speech and this questions the interrogative pronouns remains the same you should not make any changes that is all about interrogative sentence okay we are done with assertive sentence and interrogative sentence we have two more to finish it off imperative sentence and exclamatory sentence these are some of the simplest things simplest sentence but only thing we you know think it is very complicated and we land up in committing mistakes okay simple we'll go to imperative sentence what is an imperative sentence imperative sentence is nothing but order request or command okay order or request okay what are the word we use we use few words ordered commanded threatened okay demanded requested pleaded these are the some of the words we can use so i'll just give a simple example and finish off with this okay shoot the criminal inspector said to police don't worry i have just fit the sentence okay i put the first quotation here and then i put the uh, reporting sentence the other side don't get confused all you need to do is you need to look at this part this doesn't worry us much okay so here is what kind of notion we use what kind of notion is here it's a kind of you know order it's a kind of order you need to, the inspector orders the police has to listen okay let us convert it so always put the things which are outside the inverted comma bring it first inspector ordered the police to shoot the criminal this is that this is very simple very very simple all you need to do is just little be careful okay you just have to use the notion okay just use the notion what is the notion of that sentence if you just understand the the okay tone of the sentence you will be able to convert them very very easily okay the last kind of sentence which Uh, that we have to discuss is exclamatory sentence what is an exclamatory sentence i have told you in the previous class okay it is just to express the sudden feeling okay so there are certain words that you need to use so i am going to give you as a list so you can use them understanding the tone of the sentence here is an exclamatory sentence very nice
There is no space, so I've written it. Oh, what a beautiful flower, she said. She is kind of having a you know, lot of happiness. Here is an excitement. So what can be the word? What the word can be used? It is something of happiness. Okay? Fine. Here is the change of the sentence. So she exclaimed with joy that it was a beautiful flower. So this is how you can change a direct into indirect whenever we have an exclamatory sentence. There are many words like hurray, alas, bravo. These are the words when we have in the direct speech. We will not be using them in the indirect speech. We will only use the sense of the word. We will not use that word, we will use only the sense of the word. Okay, do you get it? So, this is all about direct and indirect speech. So, if you have any doubts, please do comment in the comment box. I will answer you there. If there is any mistake on the board in the spellings or while teaching, please do let me know so that I can correct in the next video. Until then, thank you very much for your wonderful support. If you like my video, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you very much.